name is Stephen David. I'm one of the five justices on the Indiana Supreme Court and a, a strong member and supporter of the Indiana State Bar Association, your host organization. And when they ask, uh, we deliver. So you are here, and I am only the warm-up act uh, for our featured speaker, and uh, he will be out just momentarily. So, so on behalf of, again, the Supreme Court, the State Bar Association, Executive Director Tom Pierce is here, and Susan, and you've been spending the uh, few days with uh, Carissa and um, Susan. So um, I just want to thank you for being here and taking a few minutes of your busy day to experience our courtroom and, and more importantly hear from the Garrison Sergeant Major Billy Mott. Uh, he is here with Jennifer Rittman and Andrew Brinkworth. I'm sorry. They're right here. They're not part of your group. Um, Andrew served with the Sergeant Major in Welsh Guards and in the Falklands. And uh, we have a CLE planned next week, and the theme is the rule of law, which I find wonderful since I served 20 years in the Army and have worn for a number of years now a wristband that says the rule of law always. And you all, whether you're an attorney or not, you support the state bar associations of your respective state or the cities that you represent. And the law is that system of justice that keeps us all together. So uh, without the rule of law, we have no society. So I'm, I'm very, very proud to be a lawyer and proud to host you today. Uh, a little bit about Garrison Sergeant Major Mott. Uh, he is the Sergeant Major the ceremonial warrant officer presently stationed in London, and he's going to come out momentarily and tell you what he does and, and talk a little bit about the Magna Carta. Uh, rest assured, he will talk about anything he wants to talk about because he is the Garrison Sergeant Major, and he said I could call him Garrison, so I assume you can call him Garrison. And he was kind enough to come as the Garrison Sergeant Major. So uh, we'll be around afterwards answer any questions you might have, and again, welcome on behalf of the Indiana Supreme Court. So without further ado, if this is all working according to cue, um, we will now present to you the Garrison Sergeant Major, Billy Mott. Do you want to move? My name is Garrison Sergeant Major Bill Mott, and I'm the Senior Sergeant Major in the British Army. Um, I've served 36 years in the forces. I'm about to retire, sadly, next year, but not sadly because my aspiration is actually to move over here to the United States of America, if they'll let me in. <laughs> in the last 13 years, I've served the Royal Family, Her Majesty the Queen, our Sovereign, as her uh, ceremonial head of state with regards to the orchestration of all those events that we carry out in Britain with regards to state visits and all the pomp and ceremony that you may well have seen at some stage on the television. Royal weddings, um, Queen's birthday parade and the likes. I'm very grateful to Tom Pears, to Sherry Harris, and to my dear friend Jennifer Ritman for orchestrating uh, this great privilege for me to be able to come over to America, to come to this wonderful state of Indiana, which I love dearly. Uh, but I'm very, very grateful for the orchestration of it, for how you've been able to achieve that for me, for me to be able to have the honor of coming to speak to you wonderful people, members of the National Association of Bar Executives, <laughs> Communication, 
section workshop. <laughs> In my preparations, when I was asked to come and specifically talk about the, Brit the British perspective of where we stand with our civil law from the Magna Carta, I actually pondered when it would have been the last time that a true red coat would have been standing in this court. <laughs> and I've got it on good advice that I'm probably the first since the time of your independence, and they would have been scoundrels that might have been here, in here at the time. <laughs> so a great honour for me to actually be, hopefully, that first individual in these hallowed halls. The, the Magna Carta, the elements that we still employ within Britain, the rule of law, no one is above the law, is still embedded. And I, as a, a member of the British Isles, am governed by that civil law. However, being a military soldier and part of the armed forces, that is what I come under first and foremost uh, as a member uh, of the British uh, con contingents. However, I also then have the military law. Part of the military law is the Queen's regulations. So basically, we, the vast majority, and I touch wood, because we'll, we'll always have scoundrels somewhere along the lines, but the vast majority of people are honourable and they stick to the civil law as we stand at this moment in time, all descended from the Magna Carta. But whilst I was thinking about this, I actually pondered how intimidating and how frightening it must have been for those barons, those 800 years ago, to have the courage to go forward to the sovereign, to go forward to the king, and in whatever manner that they used, to actually say to him, hang on a minute, you are not above the law. And those rules, those, the Magna Carta, the Great Charter, was then placed into being, and we have now, like your wonderful country, the United States of America, we have a civil law that is migrated or descended from uh, the Magna Carta that we live by. Now, as I say, I am a member of the, 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 the armed forces. There is a number of values and standards, and I believe you've had a standards lecture at some point over the last 24 hours. Um, and with regards to my values and standards that I adhere to, uh, self, uh, selfless commitment, discipline, courage, and I mentioned about the barons all those years ago that showed that courage that was required to get the sovereign at the time, King John, to actually fall within the ranks as he was not above the law anymore. So all of whatever, ta whatever things he decided he wanted to do at the time was actually put into perspective by those courageous men and women those 800 years ago. So courage, which is one of those values and standards. Respect for others. I will never go a day, even if I'm shouting at a guardsman or an officer, because sometimes the officers don't toe the line. I will always have respect for them individuals and I will always apply the correct laws that are required to get them to actually conform to what's required of them. Now, I've condensed a lot of what I wanted to talk about today because I'm sure that a lot of you, as well as being able to see the display that's been laid on <coughs> in this great arena, I wanted to actually give you a bit of time where you could ask me any questions and because of the lateness of our start, I've actually condensed it a little bit with regards to how I wanted to, to talk to you about today. And you wonderful people that work within the com communications of the NABI, um, I wanted to give you a chance, it may well be that you don't want to talk to me about the Magna Carta, 
it may well be that you'd prefer to talk to me about something with regards to my sovereign or the royal family or the structures that I work with in, in Britain. So realistically, uh, the floor is open if you would like to ask any questions. Now if you're a bit rushed and you've had a bit of a long day and you want to go out and see the Magna Carta, I will totally understand that, but I will log your names. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say question pause, no nominations, but if there's anyone that would like to ask a question from me, then by all means please do so. Yes, please, sir. Will you be in the for the duration of the tour, or for how long period of time will you be in the space? Um, for your workshop, uh, I'm just here uh, this afternoon uh, to actually be available. I'm more than happy to have a, a conversation with individuals while you're reviewing or viewing the, the, the Magna Carta outside, but it's only today that I will see you. I am back next week with the Indiana State Bar Association with more things that they've got up and running. But this is the only time I will be able to see you lovely people. Thank you. There was somebody else that... Has that question gone now? My question is similar to this. So you're not traveling together with the exhibit? No, I'm not. I, I, I've been asked uh, by Tom and his team from the Indiana State Board if I would come and speak to you whilst the Magna Carta is actually uh, being reviewed at this time. Not that I have a link with the Magna Carta. I haven't been in the army that long. <laughs> <laughs> Some people might think I have. Uh, but I, I thought it would be nice uh, if we could have a conversation so you could understand how we within the, the military apply the civil law into the military law with regards to the Queen's regulations and, and those values and standards. And I'll be honest with you, I enforce those values and standards to the vast majority of men and women who are subordinate to me. But you, you know, there's good and bad in all and there, there are some individuals that can stray from time to time. That's all I will say on that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Do you know, I, 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 was, I was coming over on the aircraft and I was pondering what questions I might get asked. <laughs> and that one came up in my mind a few times. Could you repeat the question, please? Uh, the, the question that was asked was, how do you manage to not smile at individuals when you're on post? And I think, I'm not, I'm not talking about everyone because we've just had, recently had an incident with a guardsman and they're calling him the pirouetting guardsman. Now when I looked at it, I was actually over here in Kentucky, I had somewhere in the region of 200 emails, I, I had cancelled, because I'm on Facebook, I like to be trendy in with it, <laughs> and I had that many people on Facebook uh, that mentioned it to me or sent me a link so that I could see it over and over again. <laughs> now, at the end of the day, I thought that he was on drugs. That's how poor. But he's, he's gone through the mill over it. And if I talk to other cold-faced uh, individuals, when I say cold-faced, I'm talking about the guardsmen, the lads on the front line, the, the lads that actually carry out these responsibilities. And the vast majority, different degrees, of disappointment or anger with him. Some might think, it, oh, he's just been a bit daft, whereas some of us will think that he should be kicked out because he's let us down. So there's different degrees of how he has been uh, reviewed over it. But I can assure you, that young lad will have, will have gone through the mill over it. Um, and I'm sure that he will look at it in the cold light today and I'll say that was a, just a, a bit of a silly uh, mistake to have carried it out. I would never even attempt to pirouette on them posts there because the, 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 the tiled floor in the corridor outside uh, of, of the courtroom is as slippy on that tiled area of the sentry post of Buckingham Pal uh, Palace. Just turning about, you've got a tendency to have individuals falling over and you might have seen that on, on Google because everyone would really like to see guardsmen falling over. But with regards to smiling, it's down to the individual. If he's disciplined, if he's got that discipline, which is one of the values and standards I mentioned, then he knows how to behave because he doesn't look at it as a punishment that he's there. He looks at it as an honour. He looks at it that he's part of something culturally special. 
And if that individual is of that mindset, he's going to be a healthy man as he grows older. Whereas the lad that thinks it's a punishment, he's the guy that might smile. But fine, you know, there's good and bad in all, and we have these different standards of human beings, so we just have to accept that. You won't get me smiling. <laughs> However, if the royal family say something to me, then I'd acknowledge them and smile. <laughs> I've always wanted to come here. Um, it's not because I'm disillusioned with my country. I've got a wonderful family that live there. But I've also got a wonderful family here now. Um, this is where I feel more comfortable. And, and it's nice to be able to relax and just be Bill Mott. So that's basically the, the logic here. And this is a beautiful country anyway. Yes. They're not laws, but they are regulations that are used within the Army. The, the Royal Navy will have their own regulations, the Royal Air Force will have their own regulations, and they are basic common sense principles. It's a good job I haven't got a guard room here because that would be pretty formal. <laughs> Somebody who's probably wearing boots like me and he's gone over on the towel floor. Bless him. So, we have those regulations that allow us to understand in a common sense, simplistic way what military law requires us to do, especially in operational environments where we have to be spot on with regards to what the letter of the law is so that we don't end up in a, in a, a, a terrible situation where a man is being incarcerated uh, for something where he stepped across the mark. So I'm not going to go into it in too much depth in that way because we apply Queen's regulations in peacetime as well. So it, it's a lot more common sense prevails with regards to the following of it. And I would hate to have the Queen talking at me anyway, so I apply it. Yes, um, the Magna Carta is considered an important, one of the important documents that led to the US Constitution, yes. uh, among others. Yes. So why doesn't Britain have a Constitution. I mean, you know, you have these regulations and you're not lost. Next question. <laughs> I was talking to the Prime Minister very briefly a couple of weeks ago in Celtic Manor, where all of the, the great and godly were gathering for the NATO summit. And I know there was a lot of valuable uh, output put from that summit. But I had a minute with him. He knows who I am from our various tasks and responsibilities where I have to get them to do simple things like getting their heels together because for some reason they just don't know how to stand when they're on parade. The Cenotaph, for instance, uh, for our act of remembrance in November, I'm constantly being asked to go and visit. But anyway, I'm digressing. Um, I don't, I've never believed in getting to too heavily engrossed in what our, our beliefs are. I follow the letter of the law. And, and I don't look at it in a simplistic way to the extent of being ignorant. I, I observe the law. And whatever way, whatever format that has been produced or obtained by, our historical links with the Magna Carta, the Great Charter, is descending from that. And I, I say most expressively that no one is above the law. That every man is innocent until he's proven guilty. So I, I like to to look at it in that sense. So God knows why I have my great and godly forefathers in the, the political world, because I don't understand them. Um, I, I always say that they're on full as earth, because they're not on this planet. <laughs> I'm just having a conversation with them, and, and I don't know what they're on about half the time. But we follow them. We support the government of the day in the armed force, and I'll always value that, regardless of whether he's a shit cat or not. I don't, does everybody understand what I mean by that? When I say a ship's cat, I mean they're a little bit barking or they're not quite on the same song sheet as me. So, but they mean well, they're great people. Yes, sir? Well, 
I've got one very recent. I, I'm, I'm not going to go in, back into the, the theatre of war experiences because everybody in this room uh, experiences life and death situations with family and friends. So we all know how we prioritise or re-prioritise our lives and our structures when we're in that sort of arena where everything is put down to, we forget about all the materialistic things in life and we reprioritize. So I'm not going to go into operational things that I might have experienced. But only recently, in uh, June, I married a beautiful American lady from Kentucky and I've already been given inside information. They weren't one of the original states and I can't wait to tell her that on FaceTime this evening. <laughs> because I'm not going to Kentucky till tomorrow to see you, because obviously I've been with you great people today. However, I've digressed a little bit there, <laughs> but just before we were married, I invited His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, because he's the Colonel of my regiment, I'm Welsh Guards, he's the Colonel of my regiment, so I, I thought I'm gonna invite him, he knows me, he's known me in the 13 years that I've been that ceremonial link uh, for the Royal Family, um, and he couldn't come, but he invited me with my to-be wife around to Clarence House, which is in St. James's Palace in London, so that he could have an half-hour chat to meet Tammy, and you can imagine what she was like, and it was fantastic. It was wonderful because he was such a gentleman with her. So I'm sitting there on a the couch. Uh, Duchess, came, uh, Duchess of Cornwall is outside with a kids party with a number of wives and friends and I'm sat with the Prince of Wales, the future King of England he's praising me for how I make sure he gets his heels together and how he doesn't put his hands in his pockets and things like that <laughs> and he's, he's having a lovely conversation with my wife an American lady who walked out of there and you could pinch her and she wouldn't have known where she was, it was lovely. <laughs> and he actually gave her a lovely present, but I still haven't been able to get over there because I've had this, that much kit to bring over on this trip. There, there was no way I could carry anything else, so I've still got to get around that, that bridge. So I would say that there's many moments that I've had of honour and presentations and various things of that nature, as well as life-changing situations, but I, I would say something like that where the, the future king Inviting me for tea with my future wife. Yes, ma'am. We're not at the team, but we are driving out to Kentucky tomorrow if you'd like to park while we get off. Well, that's lovely. I'll, I'll shake you up. <laughs> Good old Kentucky. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I don't love any of the other states. Wonderful people over, all over this great land. Um, so, wherever you're from, you're, you're all good. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you really <laughs> can, you, can you say that again, please? <laughs> yes. When I need to. Uh, and this shout. Isn't, uh, this isn't the appropriate sort of time. Google me, and you'll probably hear me shouting at someone at some stage. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, when needs must, I've always learned that all my career, that if there's no need to shout at someone, the stare sometimes does the job for me. <laughs> and I, I, I still have that stare. I can't do it now because I'm smiling. I do it now. <laughs> so sometimes the stare does the trick for me. And I've always believed that if you're going to lead men and women, you, you've got to be as honourable as they are to you. You've got to be as loyal. I said about the standards, values and standards, loyalty. Loyalty is a two-way street. And I will always support my subordinates. I call them the coal face. I'll fight every battle needed uh, for the coal face. But woe betide pirouetting guardsmen and the likes if they step across the line and they go into that grey area where they're not sticking to civil law or military law or Queen's regulations, or if it's purely their values and standards have gone down slightly, I'll be straight at them. Okay, do that one. <laughs> kill, kill that one. Let's go back to, let's go back to nice, nice stuff. Yes, sir.
He's already been selected. He was the. Uh, have any of you heard of uh, Royal Military Academy Sandhurst? Um, it, it's it's our home for our officer training corps. It's a wonderful establishment, and they have a specific warrant officer role there, and he's known as the Academy Sergeant Major. So, having come through the ranks and become a regimental Sergeant Major of a, a, a fighting unit is then selected, or that individual is then selected, to become the Academy Sock Major. And they normally go on to a late entry commission from there, so they then become officers. I never went across the dark side, and because I knew that I was going to be Garrison Sock Major London District, this is back in uh, two, no, sorry, 1999, I had to actually officially write that I was declining my commission, so that I could stay in for long, long, well, for, for continuous uh, career. And that's the reason why I'm still well on top. My younger brother, wonderful man, was a guardsman the same as me and Andy. Um, he's just about to become a Lieutenant Colonel. And he's on a very healthy pension. However, he hasn't had the career that I've had. And I just told you, that special moment with the Sovereign. And, and I'll also say, a special opportunity to actually come and speak to you people as well. That's up in, you know, somewhere I feel um, an honour. So my brother hasn't got that. He wouldn't have a clue. And because he's gone to the dark side, he's... <laughs> <laughs> like all of them, they go to the dark side and they haven't got a clue what they're doing. I don't know, they just, they unplug themselves for some reason. Okay, anything else? Yes, ma'am. Sorry? I, I, I haven't met him, but they have walked past me whilst I was talking to His Royal Highness uh, Prince William. What was the question? Sorry? I didn't hear the question. The question was, have I ever met Prince George? And I've seen him, but I've not talked to him. Oh, he'd probably pull tongues at me or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, I will get him. Well, I might, I might not have a chance to get him. But I can remember when I came back from the Falklands that Prince William had just been born and Prince Charles met us on, on the airfield in Bryce Norman. And, and the first thing I said to him as I walked down the steps and he was inviting, welcoming us all home from the Falklands. And I said, well done on the choice of name. So he remembered that. <laughs> It's amazing, so, great time. Anything else? Okay, now, I believe there's the opportunity now uh, for you to actually go to review some of that um, great display that's been put on for you. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to have met you all. I hope the rest of your section workshop is a great <laughs> success. I hope your travels are safe when you're leaving back to go to all parts of the United States of America, wherever you're from. Great honour to meet you, and I'm more than happy to discuss anything offline with individuals with regards to some of the more important things, like if I smile when I'm in front of the public. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much.